Dude, I, I honestly don't have any sympathy for you if you have not come to the realization that you're playing a gambling machine. You don't know what you don't know until you know that you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. Today, we've got the legendary HWZ with us today. And today, we're going to be reacting to this guy who spent $700 today, and now he's uninstalling. For one day... I became the whale. Never again. <laughs> What's up? It's Brito from the future. After waking up from being knocked out, I apologize because in this video, my words are slurred and I kind of like take forever to say anything. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know how H Dub was able to sit there for 40 minutes listening to me ramble. Again, big shout out to H Dub. Thank you for coming through, being on this video at the time of the recording because I was so into the apple juice that we were drinking for your video. I completely forgot to like introduce you proper and like let you say hello. I I apologize for that next time. I thought this was crazy. They removed his post. I don't even know why. He spent $700. He got mad. He quit. And a lot of the people were, were commenting, hey, reverse the charges, get your account banned, learn from the lessons, stay away. What did you spend your $700 on? The Void and Sacred Packs and Prism Shards. So he was champion chasing. In a day, as like decent. I mean, it is well. It's not yeah. super cracking. He didn't say like, yeah, I spent 2000 bucks or whatever. I mean, it, like Krakens are spending anywhere from like, you know, eight to 10 K per month. So when you break that down by day, like 700 in a day is what did he do by prisms or something like that? Maybe I, I want to see the context of what H dub is part of a different echelon than I am. Like, he knows a lot more Krakens than I, I I know, like one or two Krakens, but this guy is surrounded by them. So <laughs> <laughs> The perspective is different. For one day, I became a whale. Never again. It's less than a rage quit. And more, a sudden reflection on how the obnoxiously predatory game that Rage Shadow Legends is. How much less I actually like it over other gacha games. It wasn't that I couldn't afford it, but generally, I don't like to gamble. And when it became clear that there were no guardrails or constrictive, uh, constructive pathways to buy what you want without 2% die chances. Well, learned this the hard way when I visited this sub, but I've spent thousands of dollars on raid. I'm not proud of it. It's not like something that I, that I wish that I could do again, but at the same time, I'm like still addicted to raid. I've met a few Krakens who are addicted to raid in the same sense. I've met somebody who's six months into raid and they've spent like $90,000 on raid. Like it's an addicting game. H dub. How much have you spent? Not 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 exactly. I I've spent thousands. Do you think it's a problem in raid? In raid? Mm. No. You can argue against me if you want, but I don't want when to. people go by when people go by scratch off tickets, like you can't blame the scratch off. It's like, true. Like you can spend one dollar in this game and come to this exact same realization that this guy on this post came to, right? Mm -hmm. The game is predatory. It's this, it's that. You don't have to play the game. You don't have to spend money in the game. You have to be aware of these things. I think the issue with the game is that we get young people, a lot of young people mm. that probably come to this realization when it could be too late. If you're 30 plus, which the predominant demographic for this game's YouTube audience is, if you're 30 plus, 40 plus, that's, that's the predominant demographic. Dude, I, I honestly don't have any sympathy for you if you have not come to the realization that you're playing a gambling machine. At that point, why should I accept that you want to continue to blame the game that you continue to put money mm -hmm, into mm -hmm. i don't know i feel like 20 you're still not when you're 20 years old you're i mean let's be honest right you're not you're not there yet you're just you're not, not you're not you don't know what you don't know until you know that you don't know what you don't know exactly the thing about it is it was you know that's what i wanted to spend my money on so i did and at the point where i had my realization i just didn't anymore and it's not like you know i can't i just i don't mm -hmm. want to I know that I'm gambling. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to gamble. <laughs> I'd rather invest in something that's going to give me a return. Like I could see if like, all right, I bought a few shard packs mm -hmm. and then I made a video on it and I got a return from that. No, I'm not going to make as much money from the video as I would need to spend on shards to make that happen, which is why I pull shards for other people. So, it, it, you know. I feel like the me that started playing this game during COVID that mm -hmm. spent that money 
would still spend that money. Having never played a gotcha game, I don't think I would have not spent the money. Had I played gotcha games before then, I probably wouldn't have. Did you play any gotcha games before, Ray? I actually played one. So NBA 2K has a a card game on it, actually. Mm -hmm. It's called My Team, where you can buy VC and then you buy card packs to get certain players that you want for your team. So uh, that's like the first gotcha that I... Actually, no, I played a Marvel... No, I played a DC. I don't even remember the name of it anymore. I did play that before, but I wasn't in like as deep as I am with Raid. Like I was only playing on the phone. Like it wasn't something that I, you know, was trying to farm or anything like that. I don't even know if there was a, a reason to farm on that game, you know, but I spent more than I wanted to. What does Raid do that's a lot better than other quote unquote gotcha games? If we're not talking morality, what is Raid really good at doing? that other gacha games aren't good at doing. Well, the thing about Raid that like puts it ahead obviously is like the graphics visually mm -hmm. is just a lot better. Second thing is the number of champions, the sheer number of champions. Like if we look back um like within the last 2 years like before Raid just started getting ridiculous cuz now we have a ridiculous amount of champions in the game, but at the time when like Eternal Evolution and like Ace, whatever that other game people were playing was saying that, you know, it was mm -hmm. going to kill Raid and stuff like that. Like, you know, these games are launching with like 50 champs, 30 to 50 champs, mm -hmm. right? You can't beat Raid Shadow Legends you if you're launching with like 30 to 50 champs because the Wells, they're going to get they're going to get all of those champs and then they're going to be bored with the game. They're going to yeah. be done with the game. Yep. Um, whereas Raid at this time has like 700 champs, right? Yeah. So they've got the... They've got the machine rolling. The gambling machine is rolling. People are wanting these champs. People want to pull shards for these champs. You have PvE, which is very reliant on you spending in a game. Um, I'm sorry, PvP, very reliant on you spending in order to actually progress. Uh, you know, in the content creation, people are actually making videos on this game. Raid is spending money on its marketing, which extends very far. Their budget for marketing is, is huge. It's actually ridiculous. It is. So when you think about a gotcha game, like it, this is where they are just that much ahead of like their next competitor, which even like, you know, I, I want to say right now, and I, I could be very wrong about this, but like Watcher Realms is like the name, the, the game that comes to mind that people are trying to, you know, put against it the most. And I don't even think Watcher Realms is like still even close. Like Watcher Realms is pretty much taking the raid model as of late. I don't think um, with like adding champs yeah. and you know whatnot, changing the packs to where it's like less fair than it was. You get to see the mercy system in game, so people feel like it's a lot better than raid. But the reality is, bro, it's the same as Raid. And I give it a few years, it, it'll be even more like Raid. So I think that Raid has per, you know, pretty much perfected the model. And at this point, yeah. it's just a barrel rolling down the hill. Raid has become the quintessential example of like what a gacha game is. Games, gacha games have like, from what I've heard, like a 10 year lifespan. Raid killers. Do you think Watcher Realm is going to be a raid killer? Do you think no. Godforge is going to be a raid killer? No. So, I, um, and let me backtrack for a second because I don't know that like raid is the mark, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I play raid, so for yeah. me, yeah, raid is the mark, and everything that I've, I've played and I've looked at, like I've played like Dragon Air, which is mm -hmm. dead now because you can't play it in the U.S. anymore. I played Watcher of Realms extensively. Mm -hmm. I played Eternal Evolution. I didn't play that Ace game because I knew it would be short-lived. I don't even know the name of Ace. It's called Ace, right? Or something like that? I don't even know, bro. Whatever it was, but when it came out, it was supposed to be a raid killer. Like, uh, any any of those other guys, I, like, I don't play them because <laughs> there's no point. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's literally no point in playing them. As far as a 10-year for Raid Shadow Legends, I think that they could potentially be looking onward from that, right? They've made so much money from this game and the reason why i say they could potentially go past that 10-year mark is because we've seen them already invest in in other brands right mm -hmm. to where the life of certain aspects of this game will survive the life of those brands that they've attached it to such as like the streamer ninja ronda rousey who's not as you know whatever they've attached it to norse yeah. champs now when you google you know, Thor or Loki or these things like, yeah, Raid Shadow Legends could potentially pop up for you. 
they've also created a show which they could bring back and do more episodes of down the line or even do a movie of some sort so exactly. ray shadow legends itself is you know a lot more than a game right now and i think that they have the money and the ip to pretty much like partner with anyone that they want to take this brand the brand of mm -hmm. raid anywhere that they want so i remember people you know like two three probably three almost four years ago now probably talk you know they were talking about how the rights to raid 2 was purchased by someone right like they purchased the rights to the name raid 2 if they ever yeah. need to make a raid 2 so i don't know where this is gonna go but i know one thing i know that i don't like yes i spent thousands of dollars in this game mm -hmm. I don't anymore because I understand that at any point it could just all be over. It could, it, exactly. Exactly. That's it could, the thing. It could just all be it over. Be. So, you know, I give me a little here and there, yeah. you know, to satisfy what I need to do for CBC, the things that I want to do in the game. But like, am I going to wail it out on shards? No. Am I going to wail out for prisms? No. Am I going to wail out for soul stones? No. I'm not trying to keep up with the, the metas. I'm not trying to keep up with anything that induces FOMO, mm -hmm. which makes people rage quit, which mm -hmm. makes people not like content creators. The yeah. things that make you not like this game, I pretty much stay away from. And I've I've been an advocate of this. Like you gotta play the game how you want to play the game. Don't play yes, the game sir. how anybody else is playing the game. Because That's what I'm saying you'll find yourself in a situation where you've either, I don't know, put yourself into debt or you have yeah. You know, you want to rage quit now, get rid of the game now, like you've spent all this money and it, it, it was for what, right? You could have spent it on something else, got you some McDonald's, I don't know. But... Same, same, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, at this point, like, yeah, I'm still logging in daily, every day. I'm, I, I love the clan that I play with. I love the guys that I play with. I enjoy speaking with them. And um, that's where I'm at with it. And mm -hmm. I play for those reasons. I don't play for what I could get in the game. Power creeping. A lot of newer players often ask this question. Should I go for this champion? And I'm at the point where I've been playing for a while, five years plus, where I'm always just like, they're always going to come out with a new champion. They're always going to come out with a, a quote unquote better champion, right? Nuker champions are more than likely going to get nerfed. Or not nerf, but like power crept over another. When it comes to gunning for something that players like dangling in front of us, like what is your best advice for somebody who is trying to just enjoy the game? Don't watch YouTube. YouTube, uh, and I hate to say it, but like this is a reality, right? Mm -hmm. The FOMO comes from the content that we create. We create the FOMO. You know, you might come across somebody in arena that might have something that you want, right? Mm -hmm. You might also come across somebody else with that exact same thing and you're able to beat them. If you never watched any content on that champion, you would feel like, okay, maybe they had a better build. Maybe I understood the mechanics of that match better when I beat them. And, you know, maybe I just didn't understand what was going on when I got beat by the champ. But if you watch YouTube, <laughs> YouTube builds up the hype for these things, right? You see people pulling shards for these things. And I'm guilty of it myself. I'm not saying that, like, sure. I, I don't do this, right? But we are content creators. Like, some of us have to make a living off of this. Not me, because I, I work a, a regular job as well. Is like the business I have. Mm -hmm. I don't really make money from YouTube at all. I actually don't. Unless I haven't made any money from YouTube since I really did that sponsorship earlier this year. So I kind of do YouTube for the love and for the fun. But it is we it create is. the hype. Yeah. We create the FOMO. Mm -hmm. Right? If you never watched a YouTube video about a game, you wouldn't feel like you were missing out on anything. Mm -hmm. Right? You're reading comments of people who are relating to these situations, right? People either have the champ or don't have the champ. Yeah. They want to quit. Every they complain about other people buying shards, watching other people's pockets. Like now you're opening yourself up to this entire world. This... People who are polar opposite. People that hate spenders, people that spin, right? People that are free to play, people that will out, people that are gonna get everything and and people that are just going to complain about not getting things because yeah. the drop rates suck or they don't get enough. So it's like, that's my advice. Don't watch YouTube. Don't enjoy watch the game. YouTube. Just play it. Just play Be it. Be like my dad. Yeah. My dad logs in. He plays the game. He doesn't watch any videos. And he doesn't even watch my videos. Don't. Doesn't, doesn't watch any of that stuff. Do so that. just don't do it. And I hate to say it because I would love for you guys to come and watch me and Burrito and mm -hmm. turn up with us. But you want to enjoy this game? 
Don't watch. Don't watch YouTube. Just walk in, have fun. Throw some champs in. Lose a little bit. Like you, you will have you can have fun in this game. Thanks for having me. I, you know, love talking with you, working with you, bro. So I appreciate you for having me on.